So the first match up then on the show court is the Lithuanian hopeful Kistudis Navikas against the number two seed, looking for his fourth world title in Dan. Let's hear from the PA announcer, Charlie Brook. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to welcome our players. And the first court match on court one is a men's singles clash. Please welcome from Lithuania, Kestutis Navikas. And his opponent is the Olympic champion, the number two seed, Lin Dan from China. The first match on court number four is a mixed doubles match. Please welcome from Ukraine, Valerie Anastasenkov and Ella Puth. So Lindan gets a warm reception on court as he gets ready to take on his opponent, Kestudis Novikas of Lithuania. I'm Richard Kaufman, I'm in the company of a former world number one at both women's doubles and mixed doubles, Jill Clark. Jill, good crowds here already because they want to see Lin Dan and all respect to Kostinus Nivikas, the Lithuanian opponent, but that, that's who they've come to see. Absolutely, uh, Lin Dan is a uh, very, very famous athlete throughout the whole of Asia and in badminton terms, very, very, uh, great player already. You know, it's, it's very rare that you say that about a current player, to say that they're already a great player, but three world titles already, Olympic champion, as you say, in Beijing, will be hoping to retain that Olympic title next year in this very arena. He is a very, very special player. Well, has his aura of invincibility disappeared, or is he going to rise to the occasion again? Of course, a fourth world title would equal the record of his uh, retired teammate Gao Ling, who won 15 major women's and mixed doubles titles. We talk about whether the aura has disappeared. There's been a few injuries, a couple of losses, as we can see in that win-loss ratio there. And is he still the same player he was, say, a year ago, or is there a little chink in the armour? Uh, I think it, it depends on his mood. I think that because he's won everything there is to win in badminton terms that you know he's been all england champion he's in fact won that title four times that's regarded as the the ultimate super series uh, title to win the all england he's been three times world champion olympic gold medals uh, it's difficult perhaps for him to keep his motivation on a tournament type by tournament basis he will be very keen having lost in the final of the all england this year to go one better here at the World Championships and re-confirm uh, his status that he is the best player around at the moment. But, you know, uh, Olympic, come the Olympic Games, he'll be fired up as anyone. Well, here's his opponent, Kestudis Navikas, who said it was a cruel draw. His coach said the computer has been heartless. Navikas up against Lin Dan. Any chance at all? Um, no, come on. <laughs> Be honest, first game. First game, I, it's desperately difficult for him. I mean, he's got a healthy win-loss record for the year, 40 in the world. I mean, I called a match yesterday with Chen Long, the number five uh, men's singles player in the world, losing out to Kevin Corden of Guatemala. You know, before the start of play, we all talked about it and we said, oh, well, it'll probably be a little one-sided. We didn't believe in our wildest dreams that Chen Long would be beaten, but he was beaten. He was beaten by the better player. So that's the beauty of sports. You just never know what's going to happen. So, you know, he will be fighting all the way, but I do think it's a tall order. There is the uh, umpire, Grace Chair of Singapore. And Jakob Sindberg is our service judge. 
Well, it's always a, a big occasion, is it, Lindan on court? He's had a little bit of few injury problems, even in training. They've had a one-month training camp ahead of these World Championships. He was out of action for a week of that, but according to the Chinese camp, he's looked sharp in training the last couple of days. Not his first injury of the year, pulled out of the Singapore Open final, had a stomach problem there and missed the Malaysian Open with a back injury, but you know, he is, I suppose, mature as a, as a badminton player. He's going to pick up the odd knocks, and even this 27-year-old Lithuanian's had his problems. He has had a, an Achilles tendon injury this year, which has set him back a little bit. So it's part and parcel, I suppose, of, of being a top sportsman. Yes, it is, but... Um, uh, Ladies and gentlemen... I think Lindan, there's, the there's right, been other problems Lindan, as well. China. Navikas, Lithuania. Katistas, Navikas, to serve. Laval, play. So, day two of the World Championships underway in London. Brightly start, hasn't it? So you were mentioning so there about Lindan's problems other no. than injuries. What were you referring to there, Joe? Well, the, I guess using the word problem is is perhaps not quite correct. I mean, the, there's there was a lot of talk. You mentioned the fact that he pulled out of the Singapore Open final super series event final uh, with a stomach problem no, it, it's I'm, I'm not saying that he didn't have a stomach problem but that was the fourth time in six consecutive super series events that he had pulled out of the tournament part way through and he got greeted by a very very hostile crowd in Singapore because people felt the crowd in Singapore felt that it, his pulling out of events was happening on too regular a basis and you're absolutely right any player that plays to the level that he does and, and any top class athlete will pick up injury problems but um, you know I mentioned just before the match got underway about maybe the lack of motivation in ordinary super series events rather than a world championships and olympic games asian games something like that there's no doubt he's up for those events but whether his uh lack of real purpose towards everyday tournaments month in month out is the same level is perhaps for in question love. interesting uh, point to dwell on isn't it with lindan who's made the perfect start here Why he's uh, so number two in the world. One, four. First point won by Nivikas, and it was greeted with a little bit of a fist pump. He's uh, up and running. The last thing you want to do on a big stage like this is be humiliated. Yeah, it's good attacking play. Just out. Not by much. Three, the start of the game, four. I suppose you can excuse him for getting his angles wrong. So three points in a row run by Gustavus Nivikas here, who's been preparing for these World Championships in Ibiza in the sunshine. Not his first World Championships by far. He first played in one of these back in 2006. Service over. Five, three. Yeah, it's interesting though with uh, Nabikas. He's playing his sixth, as you say, um, world championship, but he's never got past the second round. He's, uh, he's been a real regular. He's one of those very good players, but has, has yet to ever have a real breakthrough. Six, 
Three. He's had a few games, I suppose, like you would do over the years, where he's pushed plays. Last year, we mentioned uh, Chen Long. He, he took him to three games in the Bitburger Open. 21-17, I think he lost in the final over. game. Four, six. So he's certainly got the capabilities of producing good performances, but this is a real tough task ahead of him. He admits he's got a minimal chance of progressing, but nothing to lose, he says. Five, six. Yeah, and that's a wonderful uh, sort of place to be in sporting terms, that you feel you haven't got anything to lose, there's no pressure on you. Everything is a bonus. And, and therefore, you, you relax in your style of play, and, and you just go for it. It's pressure that can do really funny things to an athlete. Service over. Seven, five. Address the shuffle early Eight, at the net. Five. Just touching on the point you were talking about before, Jill, the uh, Malaysian national coach, Rashid Sidex, says that all the withdrawing from events from Lindan has been about playing psychological games on his opponents. Would you concur with that? Um, yes, to an extent. I think you have to take note that... Six. Three Eight. of the four times that he's withdrawn recently has been against a teammate. And, uh, um, oh, gosh, look at that, 253. Um, you know, it's been known in the past that uh, China are very keen to um, take home all medals. They've openly said here that at these World Championships they want to emulate what they did last year and win Nine, all five six. gold medals in all five disciplines and they see perhaps um, the advantage of having more players in the draw that can all have a go at disposing of the top players as it were so Ten, again there's been six. innuendo uh, I don't know what the truth is there's been lots of talk about it you know psychological games or or you know what are they up to I don't know all I know is that Lindan is the most wonderful badminton player. Yeah. And I just love watching him play. And every time he's not playing, I sort of feel disappointed because I'm, I'm not able to watch his seven, greatness at work. Well, this was nicely played by uh, Nivikas, wasn't it? And he's very much settled into this match now. been a, a one-sided affair. Lindan, though, very much in control. Super Dan, as he's known. A real superstar in China. He's uh, in many TV adverts on billboard posters. He is uh, a player who is more than just a, a badminton star. He's just a huge star as a whole. This dear man is the sole representative of Lithuania. I mean, I suppose you compare it to 17 Chinese players here this week. He is the uh, top dog in his little part of the world as well. 11-8, play. Singles play from Lindan, working his opponent, waiting for the right opportunity, got him out of position, then went for the big winning smash, 255. Not quite as quick as uh, 
Never kiss as early a smash. 306 is the uh, record for a men's single smash. Tafa Kidiat at the World Championships of 2006. He's floored Lindan, but only on one point. Well, plenty of power for him, Nevikas. And plenty for him so far to enjoy. And very much being a part of this match. When he lost the first four points, you just wondered how much of a thrashing he was going to get. But the nerves have gone now, and he's playing his best. number five 15 and 16 seeds yesterday and as uh, big surprise as they were they wouldn't be half the shot but it would be if Lynn Dan would exit at the first round stage a couple of errors creeping 14, in now for the Lithuanian nine. it'll be interesting to me though Richard to see uh, what sort of effect the Chen Long loss in the men's singles yesterday is on the rest of the team because just as teammates players from the same country feed off the success of other teammates Nine. if there's a very surprise shock result to a loss that also can make other teammates very nervous and i'm not saying that i necessarily think lin dan's going to be nervous in this match but it'd be interesting to see all the chinese players well, the women's singles in particular they're, they're exactly. under a bit of pressure there's a you know, Tina Baron and Sina Neiwa are a couple of players who feel they're coming into this week with a chance of winning, aren't they? Definitely. 16-9. Lovely play this from Lindan, wasn't it? Wrong-footed him. Got the angle just right. Nice. Yeah, it was a super cut across court. Service over. From ben, this is the one. Isn't that beautiful? You could just see how the racket had just turned at the last moment to guide it across court. Super play. Ben. Well, he won his home Lithuanian international tournament for the second time in June. It was an important win for him, he felt, after the injury problems he's had. Service over. 17. There's been a few 10. of those backhands into the net. you'll be disappointed Dead. with that but it's amazing you know as that rally was in progress I was really watching the difference the contrast between the two players on the amount of court they were having to cover and Lindam was basically hovering around his base position while his opponent pushed to the back brought forward that's a sign of his confidence. He's trying so little trick shots at the, 11, at the net. I think he'll be trying that against uh, some of the higher ranked players. But he said it's not all about winning anymore for him. It's about entertaining. 
No, I think that may well be uh, um, some of the psychological games that you were talking about, Rashid Sadek. Oh. When you're at the net in singles, if you can address the shuttle from coming from above, as Lindan did on those two shots, first of all the hard push and then the guided shot across court, you've just got so many options. You see most players coming forward to the net have to come from beneath the shuttle. And therefore you've, you can either only play a net shot or lift it. He gives himself, Lindan has such an array of shots because he can take the shuttle so early. And he's got nine game points here. And he's taking the first of them with a typical overhead smash. First game, won by Lintan, 21-11. Well, it was a thoroughly being enjoyable opening game. The Vikas played his part, but we've seen some fabulous array of shots from Lindan just in this point alone. And should be dispatched. Well, the Chinese coach on the right as we look at them. The man talking at the moment, Charles Wanjia. The man who beat him down in Lindan's first ever World Championships. Charles Wanjia went on to take the gold medal. Always going to earn a little respect if that's the case, aren't you? Yeah, very much. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, yesterday we were talking about uh, the coaches and saying, oh, well, he's won a couple of gold medals and that one's won world championship medals in this, that, the next thing. is a who. Who's who of Will Babington, the coaching staff? I don't think you as a uh, Spelveris here, the Lithuanian coach, <laughs> has got too many gold medals from world championships, but I'm sure he's uh, played his part in trying to raise the game here of uh, Nivikas in this second set. But whether he's ranked number one in the world, number Second two game. in the world, whatever, Level as you say, he, he's a player you want to watch, Lindan. Yes, and Lindan, I remember at the Thomas Cup finals in Kuala Lumpur last year, was very open about saying, I don't care about the number one ranking position. What I care about is the major titles. And, you know, when you, when you look at uh, what he's achieved in major championships, Asian Games gold, the Olympic gold, so world championships, one There's no arguing love. with that. I would have preferred a, a gold medal from world championships than my world number one status, no question. Yeah, it'll be interesting what Lee Chong Wei would say. Do you know how he has he admitted anything like that at all? Obviously, so world Olympic over. titles missing. One as he had title oh. missing. Yes, and I, and I think that is a big disappointment to him and he takes an awful lot of flack the fact that one of the majors is missing from his uh, cv uh, the malaysian media badminton is a huge sport in so malaysia and the, and the media do give him a bit of a hard time one. about it and that puts extra pressure on him when he plays these major events of course it goes on in other sports as well and uh, ladies tennis Number one, the number one women's player. You've got to get the uh, number one male golfer. Luke Donald and Lee Westwood, of so course, without that. a major. The debate goes on about that, about the rankings. Oh. But the rankings are, uh, you know, if anyone can come up with better systems, I'm sure they'd be used. Yeah, and world number one status, world rankings are very important because it shows over a period of time. In badminton, it's over a 12-month period. Golf, I think, a two year, two, two year yeah. period. Uh, who has been the best overall during that period of time? 
We will discover this week Three, who is the best two. this week. That's why you have a tournament. That is the World Championships. But it's also very important to have a, a ranking so that when you come to these World Championships, Out. you can see players realistically. So, so that as the tournament Three, progresses, we all. get the best players through to, to meet in the finals and the, and the latter stages of the event. Dan's movement to what we call around the head position there where the shuttle is lifted down his backhand side but he still moves to hit with the overhead normal overhead action his movement there is absolutely superb six so three. far so balanced by the time he's hitting the shuttle he's moving back towards the center of the court He had to win that point about four times, so though, didn't he? Before he actually four, got the six. actual winner. And that's because Lindan somehow keeping in it, but as you say, brilliant play. And you know, he's not afraid to, to try and attack Lindan, is he? No, and I think that's right because Lindan when he's got the opportunity to attack, he's absolutely lethal. So the best way to prevent him using his attacking natural game is, you know, attack is the best form of defense. You know, you've got to get in there first and, and put him on the back foot. But he's got such good defense as well. It's easier said than done. Sure. A singles player is in trouble Seven, when they have to turn four. and play the high backhand from the back of the court. So that's his weak spot, I think. There's been uh, quite a few backhands like that into the net. Service over, eight, five. Well, if he was to run Lindan close, he knows he's got to be at his very best. And can't afford to be playing shots like that, even though, you know, he was trying to find the angle there a little bit. Yeah, he's taking in some big gulps of air as well, isn't he? Well, as you've said, he's run twice as far as yeah. Lindan's had to run in this match. very hard but he hasn't dropped his work rate and he hasn't dropped his fighting spirit at all it's good to see yeah, 
But that was a tired looking shot so to me. Over. I think he'd almost Nine, landed as though he had jumped in the air to play the shot. I think he'd almost landed by the time he actually hit the shuttle. Yeah, he had. three or four points uh, we're seeing a player as you say who's maybe just hit the wall a little bit in uh, Levickus in Dan's classy play edging him now close to victory <laughs> So I think timing of shots, it's always a, a real sign that a player is fatigued. Timing tends to go. Sitting some shuttles, we saw a couple of errors where he brought the shuttle down into the net and it's because he was mistiming it. He's timing his jump on the uh, shot from the back of the court. Well, the winner will take on uh, Michael Lahnsteiner of Austria. Or Michael Evans of Ireland. 12, Would you six. say this half of the draw is uh, the favourable half of the draw? That's what's being spoken of in, in the build-up to the week. Um, very difficult to really say with, with three seeds going out yesterday from the top half of the draw. Oh my goodness! Only the dive, how quickly does he get up? <laughs> he's like he's on a spring. <laughs> Terrific point, mate. Oh, it's landed in. We like that. That was quality, quality play, you know, and that bodes well for the rest of the week for Lindan, doesn't it? Absolutely. Look at this. Full length dive. That's incredible. And then perfect weight. Oh, plumb on the line. That's just extraordinary. No wonder he enjoyed the point. Yeah, he does like to be the showman. I can understand what you were alluding to about him. He was saying that he likes to entertain. He does. He loves playing this dramatic sort of style and being the megastar. He enjoys the role, he enjoys the status. it by a whisker. Not that time. Service over. 7 15. 262. Goodness me. It's about 163 miles per hour. That yeah, is uh, quickest of the match. Oh, that was well played, wasn't it? And that's oh, that's ridiculous. Oh. How on earth? Well, first of all, how on earth has he not won the point? Did a full pirouette there. Still gets it back. Not sure what he's apologising for. Eight, 
Well, what a fabulous way to start day two this has been. And the quality in this game is uh, getting better as we go along. problem for all Lindan's opponents is that you know that uh, unless you hit the perfect shot he's going to get it back and therefore you start going for the lines and that's when you start making errors so three points from victory here Lindan draw for him it's a possible quarter final appearance against Du Pengyu and then Peter Gader maybe in the semis if the seedings go according to plan which we know won't necessarily be the case I suppose he deserved a bit of luck. Yes, I've, I've been very impressed with the, his attitude and the way he's approached this match because, of course, Lin Dan was favourite. But Rivikas has really not stopped fighting. He's been giving his all every single rally. Goodness. What a way to bring up match point. Virtually no backswing of the racket. Look at that. Just a little flick with the racket head, guiding it across court. Classy. Uh, very enjoyable match is coming towards its conclusion. Number two seed in search of a fourth world title. Comfortably through in a match really that was competitive despite the scoreline. As Grace Chair announced 21-11, 21-10 the margin, but it's uh, fitting really that Navikas should uh, end with the final point on his knees because he gave it everything there to try and push one of the favourites here this week in the men's singles, uh, a real game here. So just over half an hour, it took Lindan to see off his Lithuanian opponent. And, uh, well, they said he looked sharp in training, he looked sharp on court as well. He could be very satisfied with his opening gambit here in the 2011 World Championships.